Hey, what's up, everybody? Pastor Matt here. I want to talk to brand new preachers. Um, not so much the guys that have thousands of sermons under their belt, but those who have single digits, first time, first year, rookie, rookie preachers. Um, not so much about how to structure a sermon. Hopefully you'd learn that in seminary, although not everybody even goes to seminary, and we appreciate those men who devote their lives without the advantage of full training. That's cool. Um, but I want to talk to those who are brand new, really just so nervous that you know they're just kind of getting their sea legs underneath them, so to speak. Here's a couple of pro tips just from a guy who's been around a little bit around the block, things that have helped me. First of all, do a nice full scripture reading before you start. I've seen a lot of churches that are so contemporary and casual that they don't even read the text before the sermon starts. It's just kind of a fluid movement between the singing and the the guy comes out and starts talking. Read the text, and I'll tell you why. It communicates a couple of things to your audience, your congregation. First of all, it communicates that you are preaching a passage of Scripture, which, of course, is your goal. But second of all, there's a physiological thing here. You can you can get your catch your breath. You can get your legs underneath you. You can get your mind ready as you're reading that passage. It helps me to get my voice and especially my breathing regulated. So uh, for theological reasons and for just delivery re reasons, read a nice full section of the scripture so that you can come out there and you don't have that stuttering kind of a weak voice as you're just nervous, almost your voice cracking from nervousness. Reading a nice full text will give you the chance to catch your breath and get your voice up and moving. Second of all, have your Bible prepped for the sermon. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen a new preacher gets up there. And he's focusing so much on his nervousness or what he's going to say that he's forgot to prep his Bible. Now, what I mean by prepping your Bible is you're probably going to be using a number of different passages, right? Well, you should have those tabbed and ready to go, whether you're using your ribbon markers or whether you're using uh, those 3M tabbies, as I like to call them. I recommend those. I like to tab out my Bible. Get it prepped so whenever you're going to move from passage to passage, you can do it seamlessly and you're going to want to go over that so when you're in the pulpit, you're really, truly ready to be able to move from those passages. You won't waste time searching and trying to find that obscure passage or, or even just by nervousness, uh, you can't find 1 Corinthians or whatever. So have your Bible prepped and you'll be much more smooth when you're out there delivering. Third thing, now this is a bit structural. I don't want to talk too much about the structure of the sermon today, but structurally you want to start in the scriptures you want to return to the scriptures, and you want to finish in the scriptures. This is not a chat. This is not your opinion. This isn't an editorial for the New York Times about your political views. This should be an exposition of scripture. And so you want to, as many times as possible, tell your audience to look at their Bibles and read the verse along with you. The more you can do that, the more you're going to stay focused on truly doing biblical exposition. Now, the next thing I want to say is, is almost a balance to that. When you preach, you're not reading the commentary to your audience. Okay, This isn't a, a technical uh, reading of commentary-like material. You're preaching to them. And if you don't know the difference, then maybe your sermon is not fully baked. A good sermon should have introductions, it should have main points, it should have illustrations, and it should have applications to real life. If you're just doing too much technical work and just reading the commentary to your audience, a lot of it's going to fly over their heads, even as uh, accurate as it, it may be. Next, I want to just mention this to new preachers. Listen to a lot of good preaching, but don't imitate anybody. Um, whether you like John Piper, or whether you like um, Francis Chan, or whether you like, I don't know, Mark Driscoll, <laughs> whoever. I used to listen to a lot of Driscoll back when he was a reformed guy. Now he's who knows where. Um, but uh, the more you listen to one guy, the more you're going to end up imitating that person. That's the last thing you want to do is try to be somebody that you're not in the pulpit. You need to find your own voice. And so I would say, listen to a lot of good preaching but make sure you listen to a variety of preaching so that you're not voice imitating or style imitating anybody else. Final thing, and this is for, for new preachers in particular, make sure to stick the landing. Uh, you've all seen gymnastics in the Olympics where somebody does a nearly flawless routine and then they, uh, they fall and stumble at the very end. 
You don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you know exactly where you're going to end the sermon and land it on the landing pad. Okay, You don't want to be like an airplane circling around the landing pad a dozen times because you're not sure where this thing's supposed to end. And that's the sign of somebody who hasn't prepped very well. And preparation includes the preparation of the conclusion to the sermon. So pick your landing spot and then nail it. And all of that is going to help you, especially for those of you who are rookie or new preachers. All right. Uh, Thanks for checking in. I've got other preaching and uh, sermon type videos. So if you want to look at some of those, feel free to subscribe. If not, check you later.